Hi YouTube, it's me again, Colin, with another guitarish video. And you'll know from the title what it's about. It's about the Harley Benton Mando Caster 12 string thing. But I'm not holding it yet, it's still in its box. Uh, if you want to skip ahead to the actual unboxing and the sound examples, the time stops will be below. But if you've got time for a, a quick cup of coffee, I'll tell you the story of why I got one. Uh, and it's based upon this thing and a, a very um, special guitar player who you all obviously know is Rai Kuda. Uh, he inspired me to play this thing. This is um, a kind of mandolin. It's actually uh, tuned lower. It's a mandola. It's tuned a bit lower than a regular mandolin. And this is built... I built... I converted this from a kid's toy guitar to be uh, this mandola about about 30 years ago, I think. I've had it about roughly that long. Um, so it's it's uh, this is this is tuned like a mandolin, but slightly lower. So it's a bit different to the Harley Benton one. But this is why I got interested in that sound of the double strings, because uh, the first uh, Raikuda album I bought had songs on it like "I'll Sing You a True Song." Billy the Kid, I'll sing you the record of things that he did. You know, that kind of stuff. And I thought, that's a great sound. I want a mandolin or something like that. I can do it. Because I thought it was a mandolin. It turns out, and I only found out recently, it was a different instrument. It was a Vox 12-stringed um, shortened guitar, an octave guitar. So it's, it's strung like a 12-string. Uh, as if you put a, a capo or capo on the 12th fret. So it's really short, high. Um, I understood that Raikuda plays it a bit differently. He's got it tuned to an open A, and some of the double strings uh, are taken off. They're only single. Some of them are double, and he plays with slide. Well, that's a bit much for me to take in all at once. So let's figure out, first of all, what I think of this and, and um, see what needs to be done to it to get it to be nice and playable, because... I've read a few of the reviews and I know there may be some work, there probably will be some work need to be done on intonation. Um, and maybe the fret ends. I've heard that there's a, yeah, it's not an expensive instrument, um, but we'll figure it out. A little bit of work is no problem. And I know the intonation from this one, having having the double strings makes it a bit more complex, I think, to get it just the right place as well as you can get it. I'm not sure if I'm going to get it perfect in terms of intonation we'll find out so um i hope you enjoy it uh, you'll see in a moment the actual unboxing with me juggling a camera and a, and a box at the same time and some sound examples probably played through that old uh, champ of mine which i don't know if it's the right kind of amp for a, a mandolin-ish guitar who knows enjoy it uh, have fun and see you uh, a bit later in the video so this is the box it arrived it's a bit big to be honest but we're gonna have to um, um let go of the camera to undo the staples. You'll see what's inside in a moment. So this is the um, B stock model. So I'm wondering how they're packed as well. We'll find out in a second. So the staples are open and let's see what's inside. Packaging material. Very tidy. Thank you UPS for sending it. And uh, there's a box. Indeed. This is kind of what we are expecting. This kind of shape, and it's a B stock return. So I'm curious to see what condition it's in. It said signs of use, so we're going to find out what that means in a second. Uh, a sharp knife. I've gently opened the tape, and this is what you get inside a box for a B stock one. Well, it looks tidily packed to me. It looks tidily packed. We're going to see what's inside it. Okay. It looks like I'm gonna to to get rid of the plastic with both hands, as you can see, but it looks pretty good. And you get, look at that, a <laughs> guitar cable. Right, it looks very tidy for a, a B-step model to start off with. That's gonna unpack this. Um, I need to move the hand for this, right? Back in a moment. So the plastic is almost off. I'm gonna lift it out of the last part to see what kind of condition it's in. And in fact, well, to start off with, actually, the plastic cover is still on the scratch plate, so it hasn't been used very much. It's still around here, the roughly, roughly edges. And this is it. The Harley Benton, uh, I'm just holding obviously the wrong way around, but the Harley Benton. Yeah, what is it? Is it a Mandocaster? A 12-string Mandocaster? 
I'm not quite sure what it officially should be called, but um, that's what it looks like. Let's have a look at the back. Okay. You, you could be really picky and say, what are those marks in the wood underneath the stain? Let me just have a, a quick feel. It's completely smooth. So yeah, you could, you could be picky and say, uh, the ferrules are not brilliantly tidy in the back there. Now it feels smooth. As you can tell, it's made in China. It's some of the stickers to protect the back of the tuning pegs. Okay. My first impression is it looks very tidy. You could regard this as an imperfection, maybe, but there's nothing uh, in any way damaged to it. It's just part of the wood. The binding looks really tidy. I'll try and turn it over without dropping it. Hang on a second. There we go. And these fascinating, I'm wondering how it's going to manage with setting the intonation because obviously for each string it's different, if you, of the pair, if you get what I mean. Some of them are doubled and some of them are uh, octaved. So it's going to be very interesting. And it's got the zero fret on it and also plastic uh, still on the cover. I'm going to show you another couple of details I've noticed as I've been uh, trying to get the thing in tune. First of all, look at these really, really. They look like normal Telecaster style knobs, but they're really tiny, really tiny, really cool the weather's in that. Nice, nice job they've done it. The switch feels really very positive. Not at all a floppy little switch. The pickup height, you'll notice on the neck pickup, looks really low and slightly, uh, well, wobbly. Let's, let's see if we tighten that up. You see the screw moving as well, probably. If we tighten it up to get it a bit higher, probably, um, see what it sounds like. I tried to get a thing in tune, a regular tuning, uh, uh, relatively in tune, if you get what I mean. I haven't tuned it to, uh, it's supposed to be in a regular E, but an octave above. I haven't taken it that far, it was slightly below E. So I've left it to try and get a regular tuning. Um, if you've ever tuned a 12 string guitar, you'll know this is a, a bit of a challenge. Um, getting everything uh, really uh, in tune. It, it hasn't gone terribly easy. I'm, I'm pretty sure the intonation will need some adjustment to get that better in tune. Um, also notice where this bridge piece works here. So half the strings stick out the back, if you got what I mean, and half of the strings stick out the bottom. I noticed when I first opened it, some of these where the ferrules are in the wood, it's not a custom shop job, but it, it's, it's perfectly fine. It's perfectly functional, works well. So we're going to um, plug it in and see what it sounds like, amplified. I'm not quite sure what I think of it, to be honest. It's, it's, it's a weird little, weird little gadget, but um, it's quite a resonant sound already. We'll see how it goes plugged into probably um, that little monster down there. One more thing to notice as I was looking for the, any, any faults, you know, I'm looking at being picky here. Notice the plate of the, the, the I mean, the, the jack sock itself is fine. It's all, it's all fine. But notice how it's, can you see that gap between there? It's not exactly flush, but if I tighten the screw, uh, not, it's not focusing right, but uh, you can see there's a gap between the plate and the body there. It's not the way it should be, is it? You know, but yeah, I'm not, I'm not worried about that. If I, if I take it off and slightly bend it, that will be solved. Um, for the price I pay for it, I think it's still a nice, it feels really solid. Uh, the neck is, is surprisingly um, normal shaped, if you get what I mean, but it is a 12 string, you know, it's, it's a different technique to playing just um, six strings. A couple more things to add. Uh, in the box, there was the wonderful sticker from Tomon, uh, which obviously every guitarist knows that's true. And in the back, with, I thought it was just um, a cable, a jack lead, pretty cheap jack lead, but at least you get one. Um, but as well as that, you do get, I noticed, the Allen key for the truss rod. And also, I don't know if you see it in here, there's also a small Allen key, which will be for adjusting the intonation on that bridge piece, which is handy that that's included, because that'll be a really small one, I guess. I've got a few really small sizes, but that's thanks for including that. Tome on. So 
so here's some sound examples of the thing and a few of my uh, impressions I've been using it a bit. A lot to say about this this instrument. It's it's a funny it's a funny thing. Um, to be absolutely honest, I'm not impressed with the quality uh, of of how to get it set up. Maybe maybe they're all like this. Maybe you try the expensive ones because this are like less than two hundred euros, uh, one hundred seventy five dollars. I'm going to sell it for at the moment. Uh, but it needs a bit of work, to put it that way. Um, I'm generally impressed by Harley Benton's quality. That thing is, is great guitar, out the box, perfect. This thing is a challenge. Um, I've tried uh, adjusting intonation. I think, like some people have put on the website of Atoma, even they've put it on there, and it's really good Atoma, and they leave these comments up there. People saying, it's great for the money, but it needs work. Out of the box, it's not really a good instrument. Uh, it needs a bit of uh, definitely adjusting int intonation, um, the height, uh, the pickup height. There's quite there's quite a few things I had to change. It weren't really really complicated things. I've, nothing has been really uh, physically altered on the instrument because I'm not totally convinced it's going back yet. I'll show you why as well. It's 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 a lot of fun, but uh, if I'm keeping it, I'm going to be doing a bit of work to it. Uh, first of all, uh, people mentioned the frets on these things. You can feel them. Ideally, they should be they should be uh, smoothened off. It's not a huge big deal, but you you could you could you could almost cut your fingers on them. You know they're there they're there they they should be treated. Um, the the by the way the the fretboard the the radius is flat as far as I can see it's completely flat which is fine I can deal with that I've had other guitars with like like that no problem. Uh, intonation adjustments are okay, but I think the intonation just needs to go further than they can reach. I'll try and get some close-ups of the way these things are constructed, but there's a screw that goes back into, um, um, yeah, the, the element that's used as for the for the bridge, if you get what I mean. So that the saddle uh, is a double saddle, and the slot in there, and the screw goes into that slot. In particular, uh, the what normally would be the G string needs to go back even further than it's possible without filing the end off the screw, which is what one of the People in the comment section at Toman had said, you need, to, you need to file the end of a screw to make it intonate correctly. I think that one needs to be taken back that far to get it really on the intonation. Possibly also the E, the low E, I think also needs to go far the big, back a bit further to get it intonated. And um, even though it's a challenge to keep the thing uh, nicely in tune. So uh, I'm not convinced yet. It's also quite noisy. It's a, it's a, it's a, an old Fender valve amp, which is she's not that noisy, but uh, it's single core pickups, and I'm in a place with lots of electrical stuff, so it's not a great example. <laughs> the next thing is, is the pickup. I want to show you the, the difference on the pickup position. This is the neck pickup. <laughs> Bridge pickup. volume full tone now I'm going to switch to the middle position and see what you think the sound turns into it's a big difference between the neck bridge and middle The middle has really got this weird, I don't know what they've done out of phase with it, maybe, I'm not quite sure what they did with it, but it's, that's interesting. So I, if I keep it, I'm only using the bridge or the back, sorry, the neck or the bridge pickups. Uh, taking a bit of the volume off. Also takes a little bit of the top end off, maybe treble bleed is needed on this thing as well. Um, but it's still nice, it's still, it, in that sense, it, when it works, it's great. When it's slightly out of tune, this is a challenge uh, to get back in, completely in tune, for me. Uh, particularly on the G and the low E. They, they've got some intonation uh, things going on, which makes it weird. Very, very soon on the fretboard, which is a bit unexpected. I thought if you're playing down here and have so much impact, you, you notice it. Um, It's uh, buzzing a little bit. I'm uh, picking up the uh, airwaves here. 
I think this would, uh, uh, might be interesting an opportunity for some of the songs I'm used to playing because uh, or I was thinking of playing. Also, um, you've got to bear in mind with this thing, uh, your playing technique, because the strings are all doubled. So I'm having to adjust the way I use the pick to make sure I do hit both strings when I play uh, both strings. It's, it's, uh, I thought I remember how to do this from playing 12 string acoustics in the past, but it was a long time ago since I played 12 strings. And there is a, a real difference in technique when you um, want to hit both strings, not just the top one, if you go to I me. Mean. It's uh, interesting. So, there's a couple of sounds and uh, some of my findings or my impressions about it at the moment. So what do I think of it? It's, it's beautiful, looks really good. For the money, it looks fantastic. Um, the sound in itself is, is great. It's kind of what, what I was hoping for, what I was expecting with this. Finish is good. It's for the money, frets. Okay, it needs adjustment. Uh, this needs adjustment. Uh, like I said, I was, to be honest, a little bit disappointed with the quality of delivery compared to all the Harley Benton instruments I've had. I've had like that one also, a, a Telecaster and also a Les Paul with a gold top with P90s. And they came out of the box very playable. This one wasn't playable out of the box. It really needed uh, adjustment on the, the bridge in particular to do. And I think like the, the people, the comments you see on the website, it needs a bit more than just the regular adjustment to make it a truly well intonated playable instrument. But for two, less than 200 euros, uh, there aren't many. If you want one of the, this kind of instrument, there's not a lot to choose from. The, um, you know, the alternatives are at least double the price. And I've also, uh, since uh, starting my investigation of these instruments, discovered there's also a, a, a Duesenberg one, which is over 2,000 euros. Maybe you don't need to do any intonation on that when it comes out of the box. I don't know. I hope so for that money. Uh, it looks a cool instrument as well, but that's a lot of money for a 12 string mini guitar. Okay, well, this one has, has its challenges. I'm not convinced yet that uh, I am um, going to be keeping it because I really think it takes some work to do. And uh, will do I want to do that? You know, do I do that amount of work on this instrument? Um, haven't convinced myself yet. What do you think? Should I keep it? Or as the, the, the legend said, uh, should I stay or should I go? You know what I mean. Uh, okay, that, that's it for now. I um, hope you've enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, put them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Uh, if you're interested in getting one of these things, I'll put a link to it, which is an affiliate link. You know, if you click it, you can buy it for the regular price and I just get a little bit of the, a little bit of credit off that, basically. Uh, it's worth, if you're interested in one of these things, it's a great deal if you're prepared to do a bit of work on it. You know, if if you're not into any adjustments on your guitars or whatever, uh, my suggestion would be don't even bother because you will need to work on this if it comes out of the box like-minded. Um, but if you're prepared to do a little bit of work on it, it, it is fun. It is fun. Um, getting it all in tune, just like a re any 12 string, is a, is a challenge. I wouldn't immediately take this to play it live somewhere i need to get used to the tuning of it because imagine you're on the stage you need to tune it on the fly i mean the guitar is, is bad enough you don't want to delay the songs with this you could be there a while and you're not in tune with the rest so i don't know hmm yeah as you can probably sense i'm not convinced with this one yet so i'm gonna try a few more things on it myself to see if i can get comfortable with it then i'll be staying if not then I'm afraid it's going to go back to Tomon um, for somebody else to try and have a bit of fun with. It is a lot of fun. It looks fantastic. Uh, it's, it's it's a bit uh, head heavy with this headstock, but yeah, it is fun. So yeah, who knows? Maybe it is staying. You'll have to wait and find out. Uh, you might see it in another video playing a different song. Take care and bye-bye for now.